big red button. And hello, everybody. It is Friday, July 3rd, and, <laughs> and dates are hard. But I just wanted to welcome you all to the first education class for Sectors Made Simple. We will be having these classes on Fridays at this time. So for people who are familiar with from student to investor, it'll be at the same time, four o'clock Pacific, eight, or sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern. For anyone who's new, welcome. We, we try and run these pretty relaxed. Um, the fact I'm wearing a collar today is a rarity in of itself, but we, we try and keep it fun. Information like this should not be difficult. It shouldn't be scary. And the last thing we want it to do want to do is have it be restricted. We want this content to be available for anybody and everybody to come and learn the basics. So with that being said, thank you all for being here. Thank you to those who have subscribed so far. If you haven't subscribed yet, making an account is free and it does give you access to quite a few of our articles that will help you learn more about the matrix and learn a bit of how the matrix is made what information we use, and then how you can understand that information and make the most out of it. But for today, it's our first education class. I really want to start from the basics. I want to go through the whole process with you all. And then over the next couple of weeks, we'll start to take little bits and pieces of the knowledge and break it down. I want to use an analogy. I like analogies. I like sayings. So Taking this information is like a burger. You have lots of ingredients in the burger. You have your lettuce, you have your bun, you have your condiments, you have your cheese. And each one of those, there's a lot of, each one is different. And all of them work together to be a burger that you can bite into and enjoy. So today what I want to do is I want to take the Sectors Made Simple Burger and just take a big munch out of the side of it and give you guys a very good view over what information the matrix uses and how over the next couple of classes you can start off by knowing nothing about investing, nothing about stocks and get up to the point where you can invest using the matrix confidently. So without any further ado, I am going to get this slideshow started. Give me one moment as PowerPoint decides to be another Microsoft product and be difficult. No surprises there. Share screen. People are going to get to see this side of my screen. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Hopefully by this point you know that we are here for Sectors Made Simple. It is a product that I have been working on for quite a while alongside my mom, who has been the creative vision for what the tool is and why we created it, as well as Nathan, who I believe is with us right now or on his way over to the meeting. But he is the mastermind and he is the one who has coded up this entire tool. We have not taken information from places. The only thing we use is raw data. We take in raw stock data. And then we, all of these programs we've written are all made by us and for us. So the beauty is we get to control this and you all get to help us decide where we go. So with that being said, welcome to Sectors Made Simple. Let's dig in and figure out a little bit more about what the tool is what information it uses, and how you use it. So the first thing I want to do is look at a chart. Now this chart that we are looking at is the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is a index or a group of the 500 largest stocks within the, within the New York Stock Exchange. And we give it a price so that we can say, oh, the S&P 500 is up 5% today. That means that the market of the 500 largest stocks is up 5%. So it's a very good way to look at some of the largest companies in the New York Stock Exchange and get an idea of how they are doing or get the health of the market. So what we're seeing here is 
from January 4th of 2019, the first trading day of 2019, up till the first trading day of 2020, the S&P 500 started off at zero. So it started at the starting line at, at zero. And by the end of the race, it ended up at 27.76% up, which means if you started with $100 on January 2019, you would end up with $127 and 20, or sorry, 76 cents. So you would have made $27 and 26 cents. Now, that's a slightly tricky thing to say because the S&P 500 is not something you can invest in. You can't go down to the New York Stock Exchange and say, make me one with everything and suddenly have 500 stocks come into your portfolio. You need to buy and sell tickers or equities within the market. But what if I told you if there was an equity that let you buy the basket of all of the stocks in the S&P 500? That is called an ETF. An ETF lets us take our money and invest it into an index, such as the S&P 500, and actually buy and sell that index to make money. Now, I'm gonna just give an example, and for all of the examples I will be giving today, exchange-traded funds are not just for indexes. They are for markets. They are for foreign markets. They are for currencies. So to keep things very simple, I am going to use one family of sectors and of ETFs, and it is called the SPIDER. SPDR group. So SPIDER is the group that I will be using throughout all of this. So whenever you see a ticker or a kind of listing, it is the, it is the SPIDER version of that sector. So if you wanted, you could go type in that ticker symbol and get the price for whatever that is. So for example, for the S&P 500, we would use the ticker symbol SPY or S-P-Y. So you could say that we could have invested in the SPY, so invested in the S&P 500 and made 27.76% on our money. But during that exact same period, we could look at market sectors or little parts of the market that specialize in an industry or in a type of service. And we can invest in those individual sections of the market if and when that section of the market is doing better than the S&P 500. So let me give a few examples of some different sectors that we would have. We have technology, health, energy, materials, utilities, real estate, so on and so forth. And there ends up being 11 different segments that we can look at. So here we see all of them broken out by the percent that segment or that sector is worth in regards to the entire S&P 500. So to kind of take some of these numbers and put it into words, we could say that technology has 21% or 21.5% of the weighting. So if you took the value of all of the S&P 500, 21.5% of that value is in the technology sector, whereas only 2.8% is in the materials sector. So while some sectors may be larger and some sectors may be smaller, you can still buy shares of these ETFs to be able to buy into any of these sectors that you want. So let's put my money where my mouth is. If I had invested in energy, how would I have done? So let's use that same period of time. Let's look at the 2019 trading year. If I had invested in the S&P 500, remember, it's the same chart as we saw before, I would end up with 27.76% return. However, if I had invested in energy, I would have only made 9.6%. And some of you may be sitting there saying, you know what, 
making 9.6% on your money. That's not bad. You still made money. But at what cost? What did you miss out on? Because you invested in energy when you could have invested in the S&P 500. Or you could have invested in another sector. Now, let's use technology. Let's put technology over the exact same graph. And we have technology at 52% over that same period of time. So where the S&P 500 made 27.76%, technology made 52%. So almost double the return of the S&P 500 in the exact same year. Um, really quickly, there's a question that someone had. Um, am I going to explain in Spanish all of the seminars? Vamos a tener subtítulos en español. Solamente um, estas clases va a estar en inglés, um, pero vamos a tener subtítulos. Y pienso que mi madre va a hacer uh, videos en solamente español también. Uh, so, also, we are going to have these classes in English. However, if people have questions in Spanish, we can definitely answer those, as well as we will do our best to have important videos translated so we'll have subtitles that you can read in the video as you watch it. So, moving on. Let's look at now, because first we looked at technology and we looked at energy. Let's look at all of the sectors. Let's look at the entire market. Ugh, that's a lot of lines and they're kind of going all over the place. But let's try and make some sense of all of this. Everything starts at zero. Everyone starts at the starting line for the race. And the gun goes off, everyone runs their marathon, runs their 26 miles, and at the very end we want to know who came in first place and by how much. What's really cool about this graph is we can see that there's this big section over here where we have one leader, which is technology, one not so much a leader, and then we have everybody else in the middle. So oftentimes you will get to see sectors become leaders and really create a big gap in price between them and the rest of the market. That is what we call sector leadership or sector performance leadership. So let's now go a little bit further into this, shall we? Let's look at that same chart over the same period of time, but instead of seeing all these terrifying lines, let's just look at where did it start? Where did it end? So you could say, I ran a marathon in three hours and 10 minutes. The three hours and 10 minutes means that's our percent change. So we could say the S&P 500 performed in that year or ran its year at 28.9% return, discretionary at 28 point, or 28%, technology here again we see 50.85%, for the most part, everything is doing pretty well. So this is a good market. Let's look at a market that, you know, wasn't so good. A good example of that would be 2008 to 2009. Really rough time in the market, but still there was a leader. We see real estate over that one year period of time where everybody else, well, Communications broke even, but we'll pretend like that. Just ignore that for now. Everybody else in the market was losing money. The market was losing money. Your dog was losing money. But real estate, real estate in that exact same period of time made almost 60% return. So it goes to show that even in a bear market, there is still a bull market somewhere. And that is what we try and do with sectors. We try and find that bull market because once we find that market, we know that 80% of a stock's price performance is due to its sector, which means the 
stock's price mostly is determined by the performance of the sector it belongs to. So you could say, for example, IBM. 80% of IBM's price is due to the sector it belongs to. So that is something good to keep in mind. Now, we can see here that there are market leaders even in bad markets. But why does that happen? Why do we have leaders and we have laggards? The reason is, is because different markets will do better in different climates. Here, for example, you've probably heard the word unprecedented times more times than you care to admit or care to count. But the reality is, this market has caused market leaders and laggards to become super polarized. We see huge leaders and huge losers across the market. And this right now, we're, what we're looking at is the chart from March 5th of 2020 to today. So four months period of time, about the duration that we've been having restrictions. And we're looking here at sectors that have made money over that period of time. We see some that have lost quite a bit, such as energy, utilities, financials, real estate. And then we see some that have won, such as technology, discretionary, which is your more luxury goods, your washing machines, your dishwashers, your cars, all of that would fall under discretionary. And then communication services. Those three sectors, mostly because a lot of us started having to work at home and spending a lot more time at home, took off. Mainly led by companies such as Zoom that really took advantage of the fact that everyone is at home and made some money along the way. So this is only telling us one side of the story. This is only telling us where did we start, where did we end, who were the winners, who were the losers. Now I want to go back to that really scary looking graph. And I promise I'll make some sense of it in a minute here. This is the exact same time period we just looked at. So this is our four months, 84 days, between March 5th and today. We see that many sectors started off down with the worst sector being financials. The financials hit that, that lowest line that you see there is the financial sector. And since then, all of the sectors have been moving up, but some have moved more than others and they've moved at different times. So for example, technology is our leading sector that we saw. So I want to, sorry, you're right, uh, Nate is right. Energy is that lowest line, my apologies, not uh, financials. So energy was that lowest line that lost 45% of its value. But this is all over time. Now I want to compare how prices have changed over time to the sector that we said was the leader. So before we said technology had the highest return, Let's say that that is our leading sector. So on this chart, I'm going to make it so that zero line is no longer just zero. We are now going to compare the prices of all of the other sectors compared to technology. So zero will now be technology and all of the other prices are now compared to technology. So for example, we can see that consumer staples had 5% lower return than technology. That doesn't mean they lost money. That just means that they were 5% lower than what technology did. So we know that at the end of our four months, technology was the leader. But that wasn't always the case. If you look closely, you can see there's this section over on the left side of the chart where technology was beaten out by two sectors. They were beaten out by healthcare and they were beaten out by staples. So you could have bought and hold and held technology through that entire period of time. But what if we had a way to be able to tell those leading sectors so that instead of just buying into one sector for four months, 
you can watch and find the leading sectors as they emerge. You could have invested in staples and healthcare. And then once those started to fall out of favor, then gone to technology or another sector. But the point here is, is that sector leaders are not, they don't remain. Oftentimes they move around. Sometimes they can stick around longer than others. But leaders change, markets shift, and new leaders emerge. And it's very important to keep all of this in mind and be checking to see what leaders are coming up because remember, you could make 10% of your money in the SPY, but in that same period of time, you could find and try and identify the leading sector and maybe do a little bit better than that 10%. So let's go back to 2007 to 2008. Really rough time in the market. We see that by the end of this one year period, the S&P 500 lost 42% of its value, which is rough that is some of the this is one of the hardest times of the market that we've seen in recent history but even through all of that turmoil we still see that there were some sectors making money at different points even in the bear market we saw that real estate had its moments of glory and ended up by the end of that year being the only sector or even the market the only sector to have over 0% return, which means if you had bought and held, you would have ended up with slightly more money than you had started off with. But when you compare it to everybody else, that's not a bad place to be. But what if then you had kept keeping an eye on real estate? How did real estate do from here? Answer is it did all right. It, it did more than all right. Real estate ended up 473% up on your investment over a six year period between 2007 and 2013. It may have not been the top performing sector at, at all points there, but we can see throughout that period of time, even after the crash, real estate created its market and created dominance and maintained that dominance until 2013. So you can try and track sectors for two different things. You can try and find the biggest fish in the pond so that you can try and reel in that big fish. Or when everybody is swimming in one direction, you can try and look for the sector that's defying odds and is trying to go in the opposite direction. So you can either be the big fish you can either be looking for the big fish in the small pond with the smaller fish, or you can be trying to swim upstream when everyone else is just going with the flow. But now this brings up a very good question. We have a bunch of sectors. They're always moving around. It's very easy to say what happened. It's very hard to say what will happen. Remember, as investors, we can't promise returns. We can't promise you will make money. We can do our best to study what has happened and try and use that information, but you never are certain what will happen. But what we try and do using sectors is we try and ride the momentum so that you get lifted up with the rest of the sectors as you make your way through investing. You buy into a sector that's on its way up. When it runs out of steam, you sell off or you reallocate to another sector that you feel is now doing better or will do better. So this is a whole lot of information. This is why we've made the matrix, but how does it all work? Because really you can, it's all concepts. This is all cool information to learn and then maybe use at the dinner table one day to show off for your uncle. But let's actually go through start getting into a little bit of detail and explain how do we figure out sector leadership? How do we determine what is a leader and what might not be so much? We do this by two ways. By watching that again, I guess. We do this by two ways. We try and compare 
each sector to every other sector every single day. And the reason we do this is be, like we saw before, it's important to understand where things started and where they ended. But the performance over that period of time is in, the performance over that time is defined or is explained by the point where you start. Because you can start at a different time and have different results. So it's very important that we look at performance today. Who is the leader today? I don't I can't go back three months ago and invest. It doesn't do me much good to know who was the leader three months ago. I need to know who the leader is today because I need to figure out who will be the leader tomorrow. So we do this by evaluating two different things. For every comparison, we try and look at the latest trend, which is going to tell us the long-term performance of that sector. And we want to look at direction. So is it good and getting better? Is it bad and getting better? Or the other way around, could be good and getting worse, could be bad and getting better. You never know. And that's why we do this, is we try and keep up to date because this will change every day. What sectors are performing better than others? So these two topics we define by using a, something called point and figure, P and F. Point and figure charts try and cut through a lot of the noise that you will see in a normal stock chart, where sometimes you'll see a period of five months where nothing happens and then suddenly stock takes off. With point and figure, time doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how much does the price change and in what direction. And then comparing that price change to the past performance. So looking at how we would do this using relative strength charts, or the best way to think about it is comparison charts. We first want to pick what we want to look at. So for the purposes of this example, I'm going to use XLK, which remember I talked about spider before. This is the spider sector ETF for technology. Then we want to compare it. So we'll put a dot dot and then we want to put what we want to compare it to. So in this case, we are comparing technology, which is what we want to look at, and comparing it to energy. So this is a chart that you can do on stock charts. So if you ever go, if you're ever curious, you can go to stockcharts.com and you can do these comparisons yourself and compare anything. You can compare apples to oranges. You can compare Apple to IBM. You can compare IBM to, I don't know, that weird penny stock that your grandfather just told you about. You can compare any two equities and it will always show a very similar chart. It will show you a chart with a whole lot of X's and a whole lot of O's, but the one thing it won't tell you is price because we no longer can work with price. You can't go to the New York Stock Exchange and say, I want to buy the comparison between XLK and XLE. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. So what we see on the right-hand side here is not the price of whatever we're looking at. It is the ratio or the percent of the price difference. So the, the actual math behind it is the relative strength price is the first equity or what we're looking at, so in this case XLK, divided by the price of the second equity, XLE, times 100. Or, to so put things in a little bit more of a kind of viewable format, let's take XLK, we'll move it down here. And we'll sub this out so we now have the price of XLK. Our dot dot becomes the divided by. And our XLE 
becomes the price. And then we multiply all of this by 100. So for example, in the chart that you see on the left, that 159.57 is the price ratio between XLK and XLE. So moving on, we have, this is how you chart. This is how we determine the quote unquote price that we are charting. Now, how do we figure out leadership? We do this two ways. The first way we talked about was the latest trend, figuring out trend. Trend is slightly tricky, but bear with me. If it may not make sense the first time, I promise we'll go over this plenty in more classes to come. But the trend is either positive or negative. And we know if it's positive or negative because we want to look at what the most recent event that we have is. So remember, trend is our long-term performance. It is the direction it's been going over time. So in order for something to be positive, we want to see that it's doing better than how it used to be doing, or it's improving. So the way we would do that in a chart is we would draw a line. By the way, X's are positive, so X's go up, O's go down. So right now we see that this chart is in a column of X's, so it's on its way up. And we'll draw a line above the previous column of X's. If our current column of X's goes above the previous, or to put things back in easier terms, if our, if our price performance is doing better than how it used to be doing, we say that that is positive. Just like if we now see that we are doing worse than how we used to be doing, remember O's go down, so now we see that we are doing worse than how we were doing before, which means that we are on a negative. And again, I will go into more detail about exactly how all of this works in, more, in some of the introductory and education classes to come. But for today, bear with me. I promise all of this will be put into context soon. So that gives us our positive and our negative long-term trend or we can say P for positive and N for negative. Current direction, which is our short-term direction of the quote-unquote price, is much easier to figure out. You just need to look where we currently are. Are we in a column of X's? So the far right column, is it a column of X's or is it a column of O's? So in this chart that we see here, we're looking at X's because our far left, or sorry, our far right column is a column of X's. Then we can also look at a chart that's going the other way, where now our most recent column is a column of O's. So in this case, we would say we are negative, or sorry, we would say that we are in a column of O's or we are going down. So we do this for every single chart. We compare one equity. So for example, we would compare the SPY to every other sector ETF. We'll look at that chart and we will go see, am I in a P or an N? Am I in a column of X's or O's? And then we're going to do this for every single sector. And just quickly, so everyone knows what all of these crazy letters mean, the S&P 500 is the SPY, XLB is for materials, makes sense, I know, building materials, communication services, energy, finance, industrials, 
technology. This one I try and remember just because they both have a K, so technology, even though there's not actually a K in the word. We're just going to pretend. P is for uh, consumer staples, so staple, the big P in that word. Real estate, R-E. Utilities, V, which is healthcare. The way I try and remember this one is Viva, live. And then discretionary ends in a Y. That's the best ex explanation or way of remembering it I've found. I, I usually try and find games for things. My memory is okay, but I try and make a game out of it. If I make a game, I'll always remember it. So try and find a way so you can remember them. But if you're ever looking at the dashboard and you need a reminder, on the left-hand side, you can see what all of the different sectors mean if you hover over them. So you always have that reminder. Or if you look down at the bottom right corner of the matrix, there is a little question mark. If you click that, it will give you a nice big reminder of all of the information we've covered here today so that you can remember that. And that menu is available in Spanish. So if you would prefer to read your reminder or read the help menu in Spanish, you can do that as well. So now that we know what all of these different equities or all these different ETFs are, let's compare SPY to everything. Let's just compare it to everything. So here we see SPY compared to the other sectors within the market. We have SPY compared to itself, which if you compare something to itself, you're not really going to get much out of it. Then we compare it to XLB. Now, we see two letters here. We see a P. The P tells us that we are in our positive long-term trend. Then if we are in our negative, we would see an N. And then the second thing is we see the X. The X or the O will tell us our short-term direction. So I would say that this box, if I was reading this, I would say SPY is outperforming XLB in the long term because it's in a positive trend, and it's outperforming it in the short term because it's in a column of Xs. And now I would go through and do that for every single one of these equities. So now I would have this entire line. So now we know how SPY compares to every other sector within the market. So now let's do this for every other sector in the market. Let's go through, compare it to everyone else. This is where we get to have art class with John. Here's a beautiful color mosaic, enjoy. This is what the matrix looks like. This is one day in the matrix. And this chart will show you how every sector is performing compared to every other sector. Now, the information I've shared with you today is enough information for you to be able to go and make this yourself. So if this is something interesting to you, I encourage you to go engage with the information Try out a couple of these charts and try making your own matrix. I will teach you the steps to make it and I will teach you the steps to understand it. But do you really wanna go through and make this every day? Because the best part about our tool and about the matrix is it does it all for you. All of this is calculated every day but in addition to this beautiful looking picture that you can use for your student's art project if need be, we also get this, which is our scorecard. This means, uh, sorry, there's a question in chat. Someone said NO means, NO is telling us two things. I'm going to use this box here as an example. The N tells us that we're in a negative long-term trend and then the O tells us that we are in a column of O's. <laughs> so, no. yeah, basically, no. So all of that pretty color turns into 
numbers because really you're not going to trade based on what looks the prettiest. You're going to trade on what has the best values, what is the strongest sector. So what we do is we add up all of these P's and all of these X's because we only care about the good things. We want to look at the positives here. So we add up each column, or sorry, each row. So we would go through here and add up all of this. And then we would end up with this number. So here we see the positive trend. This is the total number of P's that that sector or that market has. So for example, technology, XLK, has a positive trend of 11. That means that it is in a positive for 11 charts, just like it is also in an X for 11 different boxes. So you can look at this and be able to get an idea of your long-term direction, or sorry, your long-term trend through the positive trend column, your short-term direction, and absolute performance. Because this total column adds up your long-term trend and your short-term direction to give you an idea of the strongest contenders currently but also those that have historically and leading up to today been the best contenders. So this is what you would end up getting if you added up everything. So we smush it all together and this is the matrix. This is, if you buy Sectors Made Simple, this is the dashboard that you would get every single day. And now you kind of understand a little bit more about what all of this means. You have the actual matrix over here that gives you the scores for all of your different games or all of your different comparisons. You have your totals here if you want to be able to sort. And by the way, you can sort the columns. So you can click on that little, on this little icon right here and be able to sort it by largest to smallest or smallest to largest. And you can find the leaders on how you want to invest. If you want to invest every other day, you can, but you may find the information for the short-term direction to be more valuable. Or you may invest long-term, where you're investing maybe once every two or three weeks, where you're much more concerned about who are the best long-term performers because you're not looking to sell off tomorrow. You're looking to buy and hold something that you know when you come back to it at a later point is still going to be good. Someone just asked, how often can you buy and sell sector ETFs? How often is dependent on the type of portfolio you have so certain brokers will have restrictions on day trading, so you can only buy and trade so often. However, the most common rule is you have to buy at least one share. So you have to buy one share or one stock worth of these ETFs. So you end up having trading decisions whenever you so please. But in order to give people an idea of how the matrix could be used, Nathan and I worked on a backtesting system, a way to say, make a robot. I want a robot that will go back in time and trade for me. The robot doesn't get to decide anything. The robot just does what I tell it. It is black or white. It is yes or no. It is buy or sell. So we want to have a rule of thumb or a way of saying, how would this have worked? So that will give us what we have here, which is going to be a two week strategy. Remember, this is not something that, this is not me showing you a strategy that I recommend going out and trading the second. This is a strategy that was developed for a robot. 
that the robot doesn't get to choose how it wants to invest. It just invests the way we tell it to. And this is also us looking back in time. Remember, as I said before, that past results cannot guarantee future performance. So we need to always be looking at the market as it is today and then comparing it to how the market was doing because that will give us a better idea of the overall performance. But for the purposes of giving an example, our robot will do. So let's dig into this a little bit and figure out how this trading robot worked. The first thing we do is we want to see, because we're trading every two weeks, so that means that on the first of the month, this robot goes in and trades. It disconnects for two weeks. On the 15th, it comes back, it trades again, and then disappears. So because we're using two-week intervals to invest, we want to be able to compare today's matrix to the matrix from two weeks ago. Because remember, I said that there is a lot of value in understanding leaders today, but if you're trading once every two weeks, it's very important to know how that sector has done compared to where it was two weeks ago. Because you want to be investing in something that is gaining leadership, not losing ground. So in order to compare this, we're going to set our time frame on the left side to two weeks. So what this will be doing for us here is this will give us a matrix from two weeks ago to compare this matrix to. I will get to that a little bit more in one second, but first we need to talk about the first rule. So the first rule is this, sort by the positive trend, so our long-term trend. We want to find sectors that have a long-term trend of five or greater. So the way that I did that was I went in and I sorted right here by positive trend. So now everything is ordered by the positive trend. And this robot, its rules was, I will buy if it has a positive trend of five or more. So that will give us XLK, V, the SPY, C, I, Y, F, and U. So that is our list. Now, where do we go from here? Because what good is a market indicator if you're going to invest in more than half the market? That kind of defeats the purpose. So enter step two. Step two is we now compare the current matrix to the matrix two weeks ago. And we do this by using what's called the momentum table. On your dashboard, you will see the momentum table which will compare the current matrix to a historical matrix that you choose. So we have certain time frames. We have one day, one week, one month, three month, two week, so on and so forth. These will let you compare. So all of the changes that you see, all of the pluses and the minuses are the changes over time. So this, was say, this is saying here, for example, that from two weeks ago to today, real estate has gone up by an X count of three. So if the real estate's X count was three before, it is now six. Just like we could say that XLB has negative four. So if two weeks ago the XLB had an X count of 10, now it would be 10 minus four or six. So the momentum table will always tell you how the sectors have changed compared to the current matrix. So we're going to use this as our way of knowing how prices have changed or how performance has changed over time. So we're going to do our same thing. We're going to sort by clicking on the little icon next to the X count. We're going to sort our X count column 
and we are going to circle sectors that have a X count of, or sorry, X count momentum of two or higher. So in this case, we would be circling XLC and XLRE because those are our only two sectors that have a X count. Remember, X count is our short-term direction. So really what we're looking for here is we are looking for who has gained ground in the last two weeks? Who has made short-term gains in the past two weeks in relative performance? So now let's take these two pieces of information and smush them together. We now have our seven different choices, or sorry, eight different choices from the current matrix, and then our two choices from our momentum. And if we see there is one stock, or sorry, one sector that is in both, XLC. So if I was the robot and I saw all of this information, I would buy XLC and I would hold it for two weeks. And in two weeks time, I would come back and do this whole process over again and then make another trade. So just to give a few more kind of details about this, because if I'm going to show results, it is very important that I tell you exactly what we did. So here's some rules that the robot used. If there is ever a tie, we will take the sector that has the higher positive trend. If there is ever a complete tie, which means that both of them met our requirements, both of them had exactly the same long-term and short-term performance, then we would invest in both. Otherwise, we would only invest in the top sector. What if nothing meets our requirements though? What if nothing has our, what we want it to see? Nothing seems like a good investment. Don't invest. By this robot's rules, it would not invest. It would hold cash and then two weeks later take that cash and say, all right, now let's, now let's make some money and look to see if it's something it can invest in. So let's, let's go back and see how this strategy would have done. If we had taken this strategy and started using it in January of 2019, by the end of the year, Whereas SPY made a 28.6% return, this strategy would have ended up at 45.6% return on your investment. Now this is a good market. What if we had tried the same strategy in a bad market? Well, here was 2008 to 2009. Here we can see that there is a 26% loss for the S&P 500 over this year period. However, in that exact same period, we can have, or we would have had 30% return on our investment. Now, the graph kind of looks a bit strange and I'll give you a pretty good idea as to why. There's a lot of periods that there's just a flat line. No money made, no money lost. What happened? Well, there was nothing that met our requirements. There is nothing that we saw that was worth investing in, so we held cash. That robot that we had investing, instead of sitting there and investing, it decided to go out and open up a car wash and started washing cars, or it decided to go do something else, but it held cash. It didn't invest in the stock market. So we see that there's big periods of time that it just didn't do anything. But then when the market was ready, it started investing again. And over that one year period of time, we see that not only did we not lose money like the S&P 500 did, we made 30% on our return. I want to reiterate, this is not me saying, go use this strategy. This is all you need. This is, this is what will make you millions. This was one example, one strategy that I could give to a robot and tell that robot to go trade. But the fun part is you're not a robot, you're smart. 
everyone here is smart. And all of you can use this information to make your own investment decisions. So the next thing is, where do we go from here? Well, I've given one example of how the matrix can be used, trading a very simple strategy, but that's only the starting point. You can then use that matrix to compare a sector against other markets, to invest in the specific leading sector, to track a specific sector's changes over time, if you want to just use it more as a kind of tracking or less of a reporting tool, you can use the finding a leading sector part to then look at a leading sector and find leading industries within that sector, or you can apply analysis such as be a profit or other methods of technical and fundamental analysis so that once you find your leading sector, you can then apply that rule set to everything within that sector, and then you can find the gem companies. There is a question in the Q&A. How long have you backtested this? Do you have another chart showing a longer period of time? So we focused mainly on one-year returns and five-year returns over different strategies. And this strategy that I've shown was a strategy that performed very, very well. So it was in the top 1% of strategies that we tested. However, these strategies were chosen because it wasn't that you needed to follow this rule true and true. There were multiple strategies all using very, very similar very similar numbers. So for example, instead of using a momentum count of two, it had a momentum count of three, for example. So it goes to show that it's not like you're standing on the tip of, an, tip of a mountain where one step you can fall off too far to the other side. You're standing on pretty solid ground where as long as you start with meaningful information, you can use your own creativity to invest around a strategy that you develop to make money. But how long have we backtested this? We tested strategies over the past 20 years using different periods of time. And this was one of the best strategies that we found that performed well in good markets as well as bad. Javier, did you also have some sometimes negative returns during the test? Of course, of course. This is again, us looking back in time and it's hard to really say because, again, all of this is a robot. This is, you can't change strategies halfway through. You can't make a change to the strategy. You start off the same way you end. So we had about 11% of our tests ended up with negative returns over that period of time. However, there was, I believe, I'm not going to try and quote the number, but Higher than that, well into the 90% of the time, the strategy ended up beating the S&P 500. So whereas some of the time you may have lost money, your investments were still better off than had you invested in the S&P 500 without paying attention to what it did. Am I going to give more examples? Over time, yes. Again, I don't want to these are not meant as go trade this strategy. This is only meant as an example to show how the matrix can be used. So we don't want to start selling strategies because that would be, that's, that's not why we're here. We're here to provide this information and then to teach how the information can be used. But a strategy will change based on how you invest, how much money you invest, how often you want to invest, and how much risk you want to take. For example, my mom tends to be much more risky when it comes to her investments than I do. She likes taking a risk, throwing a little bit of money at something, and seeing if it works out. And if it worked out, awesome. Now I know, let's keep going. But I am very risk averse. I don't like taking a lot of risk. So I tend to find longer term performers that are doing well over two weeks to a month and find those so I can invest in them over time. 
And there was another question. Uh, van, a, van a dar más ejemplos de comer. Um, what? Okay. Um, so hopefully I answered everybody's questions. So I want to kind of end things with this. We are not here to sell a product. We are here to <coughs> offer information. I will teach you how to make the matrix like I have done here. But again, I would rather you get to spend your time not making a matrix every day, but learning how to use the information and make that information yours. So I encourage you all to come to our website, sectorsmadesimple.com and make an account. Making an account is free. You don't need to buy the tool. And getting that free account will give you access to quite a few of our articles that will help you learn more about point and figure, learn more about ETFs, and will give you a better idea of what information the matrix is using so that you don't feel like you're just jumping in blind. However, if you decide that you do want to subscribe to the matrix, thank you. And in addition to the tool, which I will take a look at right after this with everybody, you will be able to have access to all of our articles. So right now there's a couple of articles marked as free. If you have a free account, those articles are perfectly available for you to view. However, the advanced articles will be made for subscribers only, as well as we have a discussion board where the matrix developers, myself, Nate, and my mom, will be communicating with all of you, having <laughs> conversations and talking about the matrix, as well as taking any ideas that you all have for future uh, expansions. We will have future webinars hosted there so we will be having this advanced class, or sorry, this basic class. Today is the only day that you don't need to register. For the future classes, the Zoom link for it will be posted on our website in the webinar section. So if you want to come to next week's webinar, you don't need to pay, but you do need to make an account on our website and the information to come to that meeting will be made available there. In addition to future webinars, you will have the ability to see past webinars that we've done. So videos such as this will end up over there. So everybody can come back and look at it again, or you can share the video with your friends if you think that it's something that they would enjoy. This will also be posted on our Facebook because Facebook doesn't play nicely with other video platforms. So we need to give them some, some love. But that is my whole presentation. Uh, thank you all for, first off, being here and for listening. But in the meantime, I am going to quickly pull up the matrix for everybody to take a look at together. And in the meantime, I will take any questions take a picture that people of may it. have. <laughs> That's what I would do. Hey, Grace, I'm sorry about that. If you have a problem with sign-in, I can help you out with that. If you can just send me an email at our support line, which is support at sectorsmadesimple.com, and I can give you some help there. So this is what today's matrix currently looks like. So if you were to purchase the subscription, you would be able to see this dashboard which gives you all of your daily price changes on the left-hand side. So over here, you can see the current prices of all of these different stocks, or sorry, all these different ETFs. And you can click on any of these. So you can click on XLB, which if you scroll down, will then give you the point and figure chart without needing to go anywhere. All on the same page, you can see the point and figure charts for all of the different ETFs. Jonathan, show the two week, just so that the two we week. can have a current example of what you just showed and maybe they can practice their, their formula on it. Yep. So this right now, up at the top here, so the top matrix that you see is the current matrix today. Or, as of the most recent trading day. 
this updates after every trading day. We go in, collect the data, run all the calculations, and then put it over on the dashboard. But because the market was not open today, this is the matrix from yesterday. And we're comparing it to the matrix from two weeks ago. So up here, you have today's matrix. And then down here, you have the momentum table that we talked about. So all of these are how we see what has happened between last, between two weeks ago and today. So if you ever need a reminder as to what any of the symbols mean, so like NO, PO, PX, there is this help icon down in the bottom right corner of the screen that if you click on it, will bring up this legend that gives you what all of the different symbols mean, what all of the different tickers mean, and how you can take what these columns mean and put it into actual usable terms. And remember, this matrix will update every trading day. So every time a trading day finishes, you get a new matrix. So this information is always as up to date as we can have it. And this is only the beginning. Remember that this tool is in beta right now. We are working on one final addition to the dashboard, one final addition of data. So you can have one more piece of information. And then after that, the tool will be made available for a full release. So yes, this video will be uh, posted either on YouTube or on our website. But that is my whole thing. If anyone has any more questions, I can take those. Sí, hemos hemos grabado este este clase y vamos a ponerlo en YouTube y nuestro sitio. Y mi página. Ah, sí. Awesome. So then I am pretty much done for today. This has been our introduction. Next week, come join us as we start to, again, today I wanted to give a nice bite out of the side of the burger. Next class will be us taking the burger off and going ingredient by ingredient so that we can go into nice, good detail about all of this information so you can learn how to use the matrix smarter and simpler. So. Thank you all so much for subscribing if you have already. If not, thank you for being here in these classes. Again, I really am happy to be able to share a lot of this information with you all and have it be available to everybody. If this is information you think someone would find valuable, please feel free to send it to them. I encourage you to share this video with anybody and to help bring everyone together. Investing is a lot more fun when you have people to do it with. So thank you all for coming and investing with us, and we look forward to helping you along the way. Thank you all. Hope to see you all next Friday. Take care. Bye. Bye.